All right, so we're going to continue on in finding the moment of inertia and the maximum bending stress for this beam given uh, the loading that we have here over here, one kit per foot. So in the first video, what we did is we identified kind of an approach that we do. We'd go and find the maximum moment, which we said was 36.125 kit feet, the maximum on our, on our bending moment diagram. And then we went through and said, well, we need to find C. And C is a little bit different here because this section is not symmetric. Anytime you have a, symmetric, a section that's not symmetric, you have to look at well, where are we going? We're going to C, right, which is the distance from the principal axis, right, the center of gravity of the whole system to the outside most fiber, so like the top of this beam or the bottom of this beam, right? And we called CT and CB, and we solved for those, and really what we did was we said, well, this is going to be like Y bar to the bottom, right? And this is going to be like Y bar to the top. And we solved for those and came up with values. So I'll, I'll show those down below briefly. But what I want to take at the time on this video to do is really focus on the moment of inertia and we're going to solve that using the parallel axis theorem so let's just scroll down and see what we get right so when we did the y bar we found that y bar was 10.04 inches from the bottom so I'm just going to copy this figure down and we'll keep going so what do we have well we have that you know we want to solve this equation where we say i x equals the sum of i naught the moment of inertia of the individual component plus a d squared or the area times the distance away from the, the neutral axis squared and so to do that i like to use uh, a table so i'm just going to list like part you know one and part two and, and we had identified those parts previously but part one is just this top section that's 12 inches wide by half inch tall Part two is going to be this with this web, this vertical section that's a half inch wide and 13 and a half inches tall. So to do that, what I want to do is first, I'm going to go ahead and find I naught. And I naught is just going to use the formula for a rectangle because these are both rectangles. And I naught, in this case, is going to be, you know, for a rectangle, we're going to say it's BH cubed over 12. And I can write that in. But for the first part, right, all we have is the B is going to be 12 inches. Uh, times the height, which is a half inch cubed all over 12. It, and when I do the math out for that, I get a small number. I get 0 0.13 inches to the fourth. Pretty small. Okay. Uh, section two, what I'm going to say is section two is going to be the same formula, different base. In this case, we're going to have a base of a half an inch times a height of 13.5 inches. I have to cube that, divide it by 12. And when I do that out, I get a decent number, you know, the 13 cubed become, becomes pretty big, and I get 102.52 inches to the fourth. So that's box one, you know, we got I naught, and then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and find A, uh, D, and, and eventually AD squared here. So I'm going to write down A, and A is, we've already found it up above, right, all this is going to be is for part one, 12 times a half, it is going to be six inches squared right in in a for this section for part two is going to be a half times 13 and a half and that's going to be 6.75 inches squared then we need to find d and what i'm going to say d is is d is essentially going to be right d is going to we're going to say d equals y i minus y bar and the absolute value of that what we're looking for here is the distance from the principal axis to the centroid of the part Right, so what we're gonna, what we would want to do for part one is we do what we would want to say. Well, y one minus y bar would give us, you know, this distance in between, if that makes sense. That's going to be our y i. And similarly for you know part two, what we're going to say is we want this distance, you know, in between. That's going to be y two. So let me just label those. Where this top is going to be D1, right? The distance from the center of the part to the center of the whole thing. That's going to be D1. And this bottom, right, the center of the part to the, the center of the part to the center of the whole thing is going to be D2. So to get that, I'll just write this out down here. But D1 is just going to equal, well, YI, what's that? Y1, we had already figured that out. That's 13.5 plus a quarter, so 13.75 inches minus y bar which we say from the bottom is 10.04 inches and it's really important when you do this to make sure that you're looking always from the same reference axis so 
So when we do that out, we get 13.75 minus 10.04 is 3.71 inches. Okay, and D2 is going to be similar, but what we'll do here is we'll say, well, the YI, in this case, Y2 is just going to be 13.5 over 2, or 6.75 inches, minus 10.04 inches and that's gonna again we'll take the absolute value of that and the value we get for that is 3.29 inches so I'm just gonna transfer those up here and then what I'll do here is I'll write out my last column so this is gonna be 80 squared so all I'm doing here is math I'm multiplying 6 times 3.71 squared so that's gonna be 6 times 3.71 squared and when I do that I get like 82 0.40 inches to the fourth. Okay, so uh, does that make sense? Well, three is kind of close to four, maybe 15. Six times 15 would be 90. All right, it makes a little bit of sense. I like to do that mental math check to see if I'm doing it right. Okay, in the same way, 6.75 times 3.29 squared gets us to 73.25 inches to the fourth. Okay, so next what we have to do is, again, when I solve my parallel axis theorem, I actually like to solve it as the sum of I naught plus the sum of 80 squared. Right? So it, it's easier with this table because I already have the sum of I naught right here, and I can add 0.13 to 102.52. Really doesn't make a big difference, but I'll write it down 102.64 inches to the fourth. And then I can do the same thing over here and find some 80 squared. And when I add these two together, I get 155.65 inches to the fourth. Okay, so with my parallel axis theorem, what I know is Ix is going to equal, you know, the sum of I naught plus the sum of 80 squared, right? These two terms, we add them together. And what that looks like is we're going to get, right, Ix equals. 102.64 inches to the fourth plus 155.65 inches to the fourth and we get the composite moment of inertia as 258.29 inches to the fourth so there it is there's our answer we got it we solved it and you can use the same process right to solve complex moments of inertia where what you do is you break it into parts you find the, the moment of inertia of the individual parts, right? Then you come back and find the areas of those parts. You find the distance from the central axis or the principal axis for the whole thing to the principal axis of the part, and that becomes D. You plug it into your AD squared equation. You add things up, and you get your answer. All right? Hey, I hope that helps. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to look at bending stress. So until next time, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.